Hey, Justin Chamnus here and welcome back to Business Management School. This is lesson two and today we're talking about cash flow mistakes. That's right, we're talking about the money and we're talking about what you should not be doing with this money. Mistakes that you're gonna make with this money. You gotta take care of this money. That's what it's all about. We're talking about it today. Cash flow mistakes. Number one, you need to think about marketing. At the end of the day, every day, yes, you are a real estate investor. Yes, you are a real estate wholesaler. But at the end of the day, you are a marketer. Let me say that again. At the end of the day, you are a marketer. You are someone who does marketing. If you don't do marketing, or if you stop marketing, or if you slow down marketing, what happens to your business? Your business is either going to stop, it's never going to start, or it's going to slow down. It's all related. It's all corresponding. You cannot forget about marketing the number one cash flow mistake that I see real estate wholesalers make is is that they stop investing in marketing plain and simple can't do it cash flow mistake number one putting marketing somewhere down the priority list from where it belongs at number one because at the end of the day you are a marketer Cash flow mistake number two. I want to talk about cost control versus revenue. What are you considering? What are you thinking about? When you're running your business, are you the cost control master or are you the income master? Now, cost control is important. Now, there's only a few things really that you have to have to do this business. One, you may need a virtual assistant. That's going to be pretty cheap. You may need Git Response, which is an email blaster system and a list building system. That's going to be pretty cheap. It's going to provide landing pages for you and everything. Pretty cheap. That's, I think I pay 50 bucks a month. Pretty cheap. You also may need some business cards. Psh, big deal. I run my entire wholesaling business on $50 a month, not including marketing, not including marketing. I run my entire infrastructure on 50 bucks a month and I have virtual assistants as well. And you're like, well, man, how do you do that? Well, I pay my virtual assistants when we're successful, when they've successfully completed tasks. Okay. And usually that means money. So I consider them a payout of profits. But very, very, very cheaply do I have the infrastructure here uh, built so that it doesn't cost a lot of money. I have done some cost control, but I'm not a cost control master. I really, honestly, okay, I really don't care too much how much the VA is making or if I'm paying them by the hour or paying them a, a, a payout of the profits. I'm really not too concerned about that, whether it's $5 an hour or something different. I'm not too concerned about Get Response getting me for 50 bucks a month to give me all the landing pages and, and email capture pages that, that I could possibly ever use and, 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 and storing my list for me and, and allowing me to email my list from my computer or from my phone. I, I don't so much care that they charge me 50 bucks a month. They could charge me $500 a month and it would still be a good deal because I'm not cost control minded. I'm income minded. I'm revenue minded. Cash flow mistake number two. If you're the business owner, you've got virtual assistants. They, they expect to be paid. You have uh, infrastructure that you need that they, that you you're going to be expected to pay those there's only so much cost control that you can do you're going to have to 
shift your mind frame over into income and creating revenue as a business owner your job is to create revenue for this business okay and when this business is creating this revenue now that feeds the the business and it feeds the employees and the virtual assistants and it feeds you it feeds everyone so the main goal is not cost control it's revenue all right cash flow mistake number three spending money that is not yours cash flow mistake number three spending money that doesn't belong to you now what do I mean now we started out this lesson talking about marketing and at the end of the day you're a marketer remember now if you spend all of your money if you spend all of the businesses income on infrastructure and on you and on a new car and on other things and you don't market well you know what the result of that's going to be we talked about that already but what I've seen happen is is I've seen folks run their business from their personal checking account for too long and that's okay to start with but if you're gonna have a business and especially if you have an LLC that you've opened up and a checking account at a bank then you need to use the business checking account for business expenses only and you need to use a personal account for personal expenses only and I'll give you another hint here you're gonna want a third business account or a third account where you put money for taxes and for uh, other things that you're gonna need to pay from time to time like that like maybe an accountant bill or a lawyer bill you're gonna put some money away because that money doesn't belong to you you put it in a different account okay because the marketing money for the business doesn't belong to you you're going to put it in another account okay because the virtual assistance paycheck isn't your money you're going to put that in a different account okay you're gonna have a business account you're going to have a taxes and etc escrow type account and you're gonna have a personal account and those three accounts are gonna stay true to what they are that is going to be a blessing for your accountant it's going to be a blessing for you and it's going to make sure that your business always has the marketing dollars it needs it has the infrastructure money it needs to pay its bills and to pay for its virtual assistance and so on and so forth if you have all the money lumped into one account, it ends up going for the electric bill and for, uh, you know, family trips over to the pizza buffet and to the trampoline place and to worlds of fun, oceans of fun. It ends up going away. And then next thing you know, you're cutting on marketing because you had to pay your virtual assistant. And next thing you know, you've put yourself out of business. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm begging you. Have the, the, the savvy, the business savvy to take the cash that comes in and put it away where it belongs and don't spend the money do not touch the dollars that are not yours okay if they're yours spend them all you want if they're the businesses leave them in the business if they're tax guys leave them in the tax account don't make that mistake Cash flow mistake number three, spending money that's not yours. Don't do it. <coughs> now, cash flow mistake number four. You should be paying yourself first. This is why you started the business. This is not counterintuitive to what I just said about letting the business be its own support and separating the money and not spending what dollars are not yours this is not counter to that this is an agreement to that but you should be paying yourself first okay you should not be putting everyone and everything else before you as the business owner if you as the business owner are not making a living if you're not getting if that business account cannot have enough cash in it to supply you a salary or some type of living wage that sucks man and you need to go back to lesson number two and stop thinking about cost control so much and start thinking about revenue and getting money in that business account so that you can afford to write yourself a monthly paycheck. Now, that's just reality. Okay, work on that revenue problem and pay yourself first. 
Okay, cash flow mistake number four is, is people aren't paying themselves first. They're not putting themselves first. And let me tell you, if the business owner isn't being paid and the business owner isn't fulfilled and happy in the business, then no one else and the business itself will not be successful and it will suffer. You may have some success for some short time, but the business must pay you first. You should be robbing your business blind. <coughs> after you put the money in the business account for everything the business needs, after you put the tax money in the tax account for everything the tax man's going to need, and, and you've made all, the, all, the, all the, the, the thinking through of the bills, and you've put them where they belong, and you've got money left over sitting in the business account, you need to take that business account money and you need to put it in your pocket because you're the business owner. I would never let that business get rich. I would never let that business have more money than me. Absolutely not. That business there, if it needs more money than me, that's because it has more bills than me. But after that point, and that's really not even the case, folks. Like I said, I'm running mine on less than 100 bucks a month. And, and that's not including marketing. But now, and that's no joke. I'm not lying about that, man. And I've got acquisitions teams, and I've got people that make offers for me, and i got people that write documents for me, and i got people that close deals for me. i got people that negotiate with realtors for me. I've got people that do all kinds of stuff for me, and I'm still less than 100 bucks a month. You just got to be smart about it and think about it, see? But I'm not all about the cost control. Now, you could be, and you can be very good at it, but it's not about cost control. It's about getting revenue in that business bank account beyond what the business needs to market and to function and to operate, and then taking that cash above and beyond that amount and sticking it in your pocket. That's how you get, that's how you get this money right here. And that's how you get yourself a new car and you pay cash for it. And that's how you get a new house and you pay cash for it. That's how you get trips to worlds of fun and ocean of fun. That's how you take the family down to the pizza buffet. All right. Anyway, <laughs> do not guarantee payments in this business. We do not guarantee payments. This is the last cash flow mistake. Speaking up when you shouldn't and guaranteeing, personally guaranteeing someone's payment. Do not ever do that ever in a million years. You'll never catch me ever doing that. All right. Number two, you're never going to give crazy amounts of earnest money and you're definitely not giving it to the seller. If you give earnest money at all, you're going to give it to the title company. Okay. And it's not going to be a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars. It's not going to be stupid amounts of, it's going to be ten dollars, fifty dollars, a hundred dollars. Okay. Now, if you're doing an REO property or something like that, you might have to squeeze 500 bucks out of somebody pretty quick. But, you know, there's ways around that. And I talk about that in my, in my courses. <clears throat> Number three, you're not going to assume anyone's debt. And when I say assume, I don't mean, I know there are some strategies that we use where we talk about taking on uh, someone's payment, taking over their payment, but we're not talking about assuming their debt. Okay, we're not signing up with our name and our mother, uh, mother's maiden name and our, and our social security number and all this bull. We're not doing any of that. Okay, why? Because we don't need to. Okay, we don't need to give crazy amounts of earnest money. We don't need to personally guarantee anybody's payments and we don't need to assume anybody's debt. All right, we're offering solutions here, but we're not walking in. Uh, we're not walking in uh, to the slaughterhouse. Okay, we're not assuming the position that you're in because you're in a shit position, Mr. Seller. Okay, we're not doing that. Here's what we are doing. We're offering a solution to you, but we're not going to we're not going to take on all the same problems that you created here. Okay, now you might not want to talk to them like that, but that's the facts. All right. Cash flow mistakes, guys. I hope this lesson helped you. We'll we'll catch you in the next uh we'll catch you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching. But don't forget to post, introduce yourself, tag a friend, like us, leave a comment, subscribe, share this video, just do something. Don't just sit there. There's all that money out there. You got to get going, get in motion. This is motion real estate.